This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at proton nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So we'll start by looking at an NMR spectrum. The number of peaks on the spectrum gives the number of different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located. So on this spectrum, which is for ethanol, we can see we have one peak at around 9.5 ppm, one peak at around 2 ppm, and one peak at 0 ppm. The peak at 0 ppm is for TMS, which is tetramethylsilane. TMS is assigned a chemical shift of 0 ppm, and the chemical shift of all other peaks are measured relative to this peak. So if we ignore the peak at 0 ppm, we can see that we have one peak at about 2 ppm, and one peak at about 9.5 ppm. So in ethanol there are two different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located, which means we see two peaks on the NMR spectrum. Next we look at more examples of NMR spectra for different organic compounds. Our first example is the NMR spectrum for propanone. If we look at the structure of propanone, we can see there are two CH3 groups bonded to a carbonyl group. The hydrogen atoms or protons in the two CH3 groups are in the same chemical environment. Therefore, there's only one type of chemical environment in which hydrogen atoms are located and we see one peak on the NMR spectrum. Next, we look at the NMR spectrum for cyclobutane. By looking at the structure of cyclobutane, we can see that there are four carbon atoms bonded in a cyclic structure. The hydrogen atoms or protons in each CH2 group are in the same chemical environment. So once again, we only have one type of chemical environment in which hydrogen atoms are located, and we see one peak on the NMR spectrum. Next, we look at the NMR spectrum for 2-methylpropene. The hydrogen atoms in the two CH3 groups are in the same chemical environment. The two hydrogen atoms in the CH2 group are in a different chemical environment. So in 2-methylpropene we have two different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located, which gives us two peaks on the NMR spectrum. Our next example is the NMR spectrum for butane. The three hydrogen atoms in the two CH3 groups are in the same chemical environment. The two hydrogen atoms in the two CH2 groups are also in the same chemical environment. So in butane there are two different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located, which gives us two peaks on the NMR spectrum. Our next example is the NMR spectrum for propanol. In propanol, there are three different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located. So the one hydrogen atom bonded to this carbon, and the two hydrogen atoms bonded to this carbon, and the three hydrogen atoms bonded to this carbon are all in different chemical environments. So when we look at the NMR spectrum for propanol, we can see there are three peaks which correspond to the three different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located. And finally, we have the NMR spectrum for butanone. Although we have two CH3 groups, the hydrogen atoms in these CH3 groups are in different chemical environments. The hydrogen atoms in the CH2 group are also in a different chemical environment. So that means we have three different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located and three peaks on the NMR spectrum. Next we look at how to determine if hydrogen atoms or protons are in different chemical environments. We will start by looking at the hydrogen atoms in 2-methylpropene. So in this molecule we have two CH3 groups and one CH2 group. So the hydrogen atoms in a CH2 group are in a different chemical environment to the hydrogen atoms in a CH3 group. As I mentioned earlier, the hydrogen atoms in the two CH3 groups are in the same chemical environment. This is because both CH3 groups are bonded to the same group of atoms, which in this case is a carbon atom double bonded to a CH2 group. 
Next we look at propanone. So in propanone we have two CH3 groups and the protons in both CH3 groups are in the same chemical environment. If we look at the group of atoms to which both CH3 groups are bonded, we can see it's the same group, in this case a carbonyl group. Therefore the protons in both these groups are in the same chemical environment. Our next example is cyclobutane. In cyclobutane the protons in each CH2 group are in the same chemical environment. This is because each CH2 group in cyclobutane is bonded to two other CH2 groups. Which means we have four identical chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located. Next we look at butane. In butane we have two CH3 groups and two CH2 groups. If we look at the two CH3 groups, we can see they are both bonded to a CH2 group. Which means the protons in both CH3 groups are in the same chemical environment. If we look at the two CH2 groups, we can see that they are also bonded to the same groups of atoms. The CH2 group on the left is bonded to a CH3 group and a CH2 group, and the CH2 group on the right is also bonded to a CH3 group and a CH2 group. Which means the protons in both CH2 groups are in identical chemical environments. Our next example is propanol. In propanol we have one carbon atom that's bonded to one hydrogen atom, another carbon that's bonded to two hydrogen atoms, and another carbon that's bonded to three hydrogen atoms. Because we have different numbers of hydrogen atoms bonded to the carbon atoms, that means we have three different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located. Our final example is butanone. In butanone we have two CH3 groups and one CH2 group. So the hydrogen atoms in a CH2 group are in a different chemical environment to those in a CH3 group. So that leaves us with these two CH3 groups. To determine if the protons in these two CH3 groups are in the same or different chemical environments, we need to look at the groups of atoms to which they are bonded. The CH3 group on the left is bonded to a CH2 group, and the CH3 group on the right is bonded to a carbon which is double bonded to an oxygen. So we can see that both CH3 groups are bonded to different groups of atoms, therefore the protons in each CH3 group are in different chemical environments. In our last example we look at the NMR spectrum for ethanol. Ethanol has three different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located, therefore it shows three peaks on its NMR spectrum. Ethanol has one CH3 group, one CH2 group and an OH group. The hydrogen atoms in the CH3 group and the CH2 group are in different chemical environments. The hydrogen atom bonded to an oxygen in a hydroxyl group is also in a different chemical environment. So this means that we have three different chemical environments in which hydrogen atoms are located and we see three peaks on the NMR spectrum.